Hi, so in chapter 5, our review, we are going to do number 19 and 20 now. 19 is kind of short, so I think we can squeeze these two into one video together. So for mean and median, the figure below displays two density curves. Each of them has three points marked. At which of these points on each curve do the mean and the median fall? So again, mean is usually going to go toward the tail in a skewed distribution, which this is. So it might be easier to first identify where is the median. So half of the data is to the left of the median or 50% and half of the data are to the right of the median or 50%. So if I start with this particular uh, line A or segment A, do you think that this is 50% here and that this side over here is 50%. I'm gonna eyeball that and say no way, it is definitely not A for the median. So then I look at B. So B, you've got this peak over here, and this one does appear to be about 50-50, or at least closer to it. And because I know that in a right skewed distribution, mean has to be bigger than the median, the mean has to be C, and that means that the median has to be B, okay? Over here in the second distribution, you can see that B is right in the middle, A is over to the left, and C is over to the right. Now, this is kind of a weird distribution. We don't really look at these bimodal types of distributions often, but the main thing you should really take away from this is that it is really symmetric overall. Okay, so because it's symmetric, our mean and our median should be equal or very, very close to equal. And so the only one that that can be is B. All right, so in number 20, we are going to look at a set of summary statistics. So, um... The figure below displays the computer output for data spent by 50 grocery shoppers. And I want to know where they're grocery shopping because I've never spent this little at the grocery store. But hey, what do we know? So it looks like the total count was 50. Remember that another way to denote that is N is 50 customers. We've got our mean, standard deviation, and then again, our five number summary, which can also be represented by a box plot, right? So what would you guess is the shape of the distribution based only on the computer output? and be able to explain. So first of all, we can we typically want to start with mean and median to get a starting point for the shape of our distribution. In this case, it is clear the median is lower than the mean, right? So median is less than the mean. So that's like our first hint. Um, typically, when the mean is greater, it typically denotes that we've got a skewed right distribution. So here's the other piece of information that I think is interesting. So 50% of the data go from 3 to 27.85. So that's about $24 from the minimum to the median. But then you get to like median to maximum, and that is a much bigger range from 93 to 27. You've got, sorry, I didn't do the math ahead of time. I'm just kind of rolling with it. $66 difference. So that's a really big indicator that we've got a right skewed distribution. Some people spent significantly more than the others. Okay, so skewed to the right. Because... The mean is greater than the median. And there is a lot more variability from median to maximum than min 
a mom to median. So those are a couple of hints. I think on your answer key, it just talked about like Q3 is much farther than Q1 or the mean is much larger than the median. Again, there's different ways you can say that. Interpret the value of the standard deviation. So you need two values to do this. You need the standard deviation. And again, we're talking about money here. So I'm gonna label that. And then the mean is going to be $34.70. So on average, people are spending $34.70. They must be getting like two things and a typical difference of $21.7. So the amount of money typically spent varies about $21.70 from the mean of $34.70. All right, last but not least is the outliers conversation. So this is something you should know you need to memorize. The low fence calculation and the high fence calculation for outliers are as such. Anything lower than quartile one minus one and a half times the interquartile range is too low. For the high fence, anything above quartile three plus one and a half times the interquartile range is too high. I'm anticipating a potential high outlier, again, because of that right skewness that we saw and how much bigger the max was. But we'll, we want to calculate it. You just don't want to speculate in this case and say, well, I think, right? So quartile one, 19.06. Minus one and a half times the IQR. IQR is 26.66. And I didn't do that calculation, but I'll do that right up here for you too. Um, Q3 minus Q1 is 26.66. So that's where we get IQR down here. So I'm looking for values that are below negative 20.93. And of course, you can't spend negative money at the grocery store. You cannot credit yourself. I wish we could. Um, quartile 3, though, is 45.72 minus 1.5 times that interquartile range. And that's going to give me a value that is 85.71. Okay, so there are no low outliers. However, there is definitely at least one outlier that is a high outlier, and that would be the maximum. Okay, we don't know any of the other values besides what we're given up there, so there could be a couple outliers, but we all we can conclude is there is at least one high outlier, $93.34. And that is it. So thanks for watching.